Hi there. In today's video, we're going to look at how to use copy width inside of Dart. We're going to investigate what exactly copy width is and the primary benefits of using it. So you can, of course, find the article for this video over at developer.school. I'll put a link to that inside of the description. So before we jump in here, let's have a look at how Flutter uses copy width with the theme class. So we'll go down and we'll make a text inside of the body. Let's save and send to that. We'll give this the title of I'm a custom title. And when we come to give this a style, we'll say that this is the theme of context. So this will find the closest theme that it can in the widget tree. We'll then ask for the text theme. On that text theme, we'll take the headline one and we'll use copy width. Now I'm going to remove the constant here from the center because of course this uses the context and the text theme, which it can't possibly know what they are at the time of compilation. And because headline one can potentially be nullable, we'll add the null operator here. So this is the null aware operator with the question mark. And inside of copy width, we'll say color, colors.blue, and the font size of 100. So when we save that, you can see we now have this blue title with the font size of 100, but also everything else that is applied to the headline one will also be applied to this text. So if we go back over to main.dart, you can see here we have some theme data. If we provide a text theme, when we say text theme and add a headline one of a text style, and that font weight that we're going to add here is going to be bold. When we save that, you can see that now on the home page, that font is now bold. And that's because we're using copy width. And when we look into copy width here, we can see it provides all of pretty much the same things that you'd be able to add to a text style. But it returns us a new text style. And where there is a new value, it will be set. Otherwise, it will set the default. And that default is going to be for that particular object at that time. So why is this important? Well, it essentially means that we aren't mutating the original object. The original object stays in its natural form and it doesn't impact this across the rest of our application. For example, if we were to go back to the home page here and we were to somehow change headline one to be blue and a font size of 100, but we weren't using copy width, that would likely change headline one for the rest of the app. So that's why copy width is important. It gives us an immutable version of that state at that time and we can override the values as we see fit. So next, let's make our own copy width. Inside of lib, let's make a new file at the models product dot dart. Inside of here, let's add a new class called product. We can give this a few things. Maybe have a string ID. Perhaps a product also has a name. And maybe it also has a color. We can go ahead and make a constructor for those things. We'll also need to import material.dart. That's because we're using the color here. And if you want, we can also make these named parameters. We'll add required onto all of these. Now, in order to add a copy width to this product class, we can say product, that's the return type, with the name of copy width. And as you see, Copilot has already beat me to it here. So we'll finish this off and then we'll explain it. We'll start off by changing this so that the string ID, the string name, and the color of color are nullable. That's by adding the question mark here to the name of the type. That means when we return a new product, we can either potentially pass in an ID, name, or color. And if we do, it will override the property because we're saying for the ID, pass in the new ID that arrived. And if there wasn't an ID, that's what this double question mark is here, use this.id. And the this refers to the ID currently on the object. So this allows us to replace that value, but if we don't want to replace the value, it keeps it as it is. Let's actually go ahead and use this now. So let's move back over to our homepage. Outside of the homepage itself, I'm gonna make a final list of product. We'll call out products with an underscore. That means it'll be private to this file. And for now, I'm just going to put this to be an empty array. 
and we'll import the product from product.dart. Above here, we'll make a final product underscore product. And that will have the ID of zero, the name of iPhone, and the color of colors.red. We can then go ahead and add the product to the list of products, like so. And let's assume for example sake, that instead we want to say, well, for the next product, which we'll call final product two, that will be equal to underscore product dot copy with. This time we'll give it the ID of one and the color of colors dot blue. Perhaps this is the same iPhone name, but it has different colors. We can then add product two to the list of products. And if we scroll down back into our home page, we can replace this body with instead being a list view dot builder. We'll set the item count to be products dot length and the item builder to have the context and the index. And he will return a list tile where we show the product dot name, the ID, and for the container, let's put a height of 14, a width of 14, and a color of the product dot color. If we reload our application, we can now see that we have the iPhone, which is red, and the iPhone, which is blue. We've gone ahead and created our own copy with method, and we've reproduced the product one into a product two, but we haven't changed all of the values. We only changed the ID and the color. So as you can see, the copy with method is useful whenever you want to retain some information about the original object. It allows you to take that object and change some of the properties without mutating the original state. You'll find that this copy first pattern is used quite often inside of the Flutter SDK. Another area which it's used is inside of color, where we can say dot width. We have everything from width opacity, width red, width green, etc. And it largely comes down to the fact that by using immutable data, we have much less surprises inside of the project. So this has been how to use the copy width method inside of Dart and Flutter, as well as looking at immutable data in general. If you've enjoyed this, hit the subscribe button. Let me know what you'd like me to cover next inside of the comments. And until then, I'll see you soon.